All right, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different today. Um, I get a lot of requests for uh, bringing the, the, the lessons back a little bit, talking about some more basic things. So today what we're gonna be doing is uh, we're gonna be talking about strumming and trying to move between chords, which I struggled with really bad when I first started learning how to play guitar, and I know some people do as well. So what I'm gonna do is give you a couple of different examples of what uh, might help you with that and give you some examples of some songs as well. So that, uh, just little snippets so they don't, they don't block me anywhere. Uh, but anyway, we'll go through that a little bit. Hey, Martin. Hey, Stanlin. Uh, Worship Guitar is here. Arno is here. How you doing? Agnes is here. Awesome. Nice to see everybody. Celebrity Dad is here. Sergi is here. Uh, let's see here. Just saying hi to a few people because it's Monday. And Jeff is here. How you doing, bud? Uh, Rory is here. Ken is here. Bucket F Balls is here. Sarah's here. Joe is here. How you doing? Uh, Wildwood, New Jersey. Awesome. Brian is here, David is here, cool. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm just gonna recap real quick. What we're gonna do today, we're taking a step backwards a little bit into some basic fundamentals. I get a lot of requests for this stuff. Um, you know, where sometimes it's easy for us to talk uh, at a bit of a higher level when what we need to be doing is just talking about some basic things. So that's what we're gonna be doing here, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do today is we're gonna be talking about how to move your chords back and forth while you're strumming. And then I'm gonna give you some real world examples of some songs uh, that do some different things that we're talking about today, okay? Uh, let's see here, Mohammed is here, Darlene is here, Scott is here, Jimmy is here, Steven is here, Steven Wilson is here, mm -hmm. awesome. And uh, Nahid is here, cool, we got all kinds of people here. Die Hard Fan, thank you so much, Saragus. El, uh, Lisa's here from Massachusetts, cool. All right, so let's start off by doing this. Let's say, well, let me tell you a quick story. When I was first learning how to play, I learned how to play, uh, my first experience was from a book, okay? And uh, it was a Mel Bay book, and I really did not get it. And the problem was, was like so many people, when I first started playing, I thought the focus was learning how to play chords, right? So, which it is, there's no doubt about that. But, you know, I was learning whatever it might have been, C and G or something like that. And the problem was, was I, I couldn't make them very fast, right? And you and I have talked about in, in other live sessions about how to speed that up through bouncing and things like that that I always teach. And um, the problem was once I developed that, like every time I tried to play songs, I would do stuff like this. I would go. You know, and I would take this amount of time to try and move the chords back and forth. And then whatever strumming pattern I was working on at the time. So the first thing I wanna to say today, because what we wanna focus on today is the strumming aspect of this. But before we do that, the one thing I need to tell you is that it's really important that you spend a lot of quality focused practice developing the chords that you're going to play, whether they're open chords, whether they're bar chords, your fingers have to go into place immediately. Okay, if what you're trying to do is, um, you know, you know, if you, you try and build the chords like this, if you try and do it one, one finger at a time, that sort of thing, it's gonna take too long. If you're trying to play along with a song, the problem is you wind up falling behind in the measures and, and you get frustrated and you don't know what you're doing wrong. So the most important thing is, is and again, go back and watch one of my other uh, videos on, on bouncing. Just look up Steve Stein and look up bouncing and you'll, I'm sure you'll find a, a few different things. But the most important thing is when you wanna make chords, they have to be instantaneous. If I want D, I have to be thinking about D and my fingers have to be trained to simply go to the D shape. Or if I want G, they have to go to the G shape. Or if I want C, they have to go to the C shape. If I have to think about it, then the problem is, is that everything else that I wanna do, including strumming, is gonna shut down until I've developed that. So practicing bouncing is really important. So today what we wanna do is we wanna bring in the strumming hand and start talking a little bit about that as well, okay? So let's say our goal today is to move from the G to the D chord. That's our goal. And we wanna be able to do that while we are strumming. Okay, so the problem is sometimes if you think about it, if you're doing a strumming pattern, let's say we're doing down, 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 up, down, up. Okay, just something very basic. So I'm going down, 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 up, down, up. That's gonna be my strum. The problem is, is that I'm strumming quarter notes and eighth notes, and the last strum that I'm doing is an eighth note that needs to move to the D chord. So if I go down, 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 up, down, up, 
and I try and move after that upstream, oftentimes what's going to happen is I'm going to be late trying to get there. Okay? Or what will happen is you'll go down, 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 up, down, up, down, and you'll make that chord. You know, you're looking at it and you're making it and then you strum again. And again, there's going to be a gap in there. So what I always tell people to do is start off doing the robotic method. Now, when you do this for the first time, if, you, if you're struggling with this at all, or maybe you have a student to, that, that is, or a friend that is, this is a great thing to try and practice, is this robotic method. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pull away from the musicality of things, and all we're going to do is we're going to try and move from G to D, and we're going to strum down, 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 up, down, up, and then down on the D chord. So I'm going down, 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 up, down, up, and then down on that D chord. Now the trick here is, is that on the last up strum, what I'm going to do is strum it like I normally would, but while I'm strumming it, my hand is actually in route or en route to the D chord. So I'm going down, 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 up, down, up, and on that up right there, I'm shifting over to this down. So I have down, 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 up, down, up, down. You see that? So when I say robotic, what we're not concerned with our dynamics and all that sort of thing, what we're really trying to focus on is that last up strum. So even if your strumming pattern was different than what I'm talking about, it's fine. But the point is I'm going down, 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 up, down, up. And on that up, I'm moving, I'm lifting and shifting, bouncing from that G to that D, and I'm shifting back over, okay? Now, it's gonna sound a little bit strange at first because when I do this, you're gonna notice that you can hear that, that up strum, right? You can hear this strange sounding thing right here where I'm, where I'm strumming no, no strings at all or no chord at all or just open strings. But if I do this faster, you don't notice it at all. And even if you do, it's a natural part of guitar playing. Okay, we have to move our fingers. The only other choice we have is to try and, as fast as a, a lightning strike, we have to try and go. And I'm not saying you can't do that, but if it, what's the, what if the song's faster? Like, nobody plays like that. It's a very natural motion to move your chords around, and so a great place to do that is on the last up strum, you simply pick your fingers up and you set them down. And you're going to start getting this commonality in between those chord changes of that last up being just open strings because you're in the process of moving. Again, I call bouncing or lifting and shifting that sort of thing as you move back and forth between these. Okay, so that's the robotic aspect is you just have to start off by trying to make that connection. Right there. Now, what I do peop tell people though is as you get a little more comfortable with this, be careful with that up strum that you don't over strum, right? You don't wanna go like just, you know, accentuate that up strum. It should be a real subtle strum, that up strum. And uh, again, what I tell people is when you do this, think about just kind of hitting the thinner strings when you move on that up strum, if you can. When you first start, don't worry about any of that. Just make the connection. But as you do that, what you want to do is start making a connection to being a bit more subtle. And none of this needs to be fast. You could be strumming here. Just understand that the slower you go, the more robotic it's going to sound, and the more that that up strum that you're taking your fingers off of is going to be kind of accentuated in terms of sound. The faster you start strumming once you get comfortable with this, it's going to blend right in. And it'll actually start sounding very natural and you'll actually get accustomed to hearing that sound of those chord changes. Now, to show you a similar idea, although it's a little bit different, you're going to hear this on kinds of different songs, but let me show you a couple of different examples of real world songs where you might hear something like this. Now, oftentimes what happens is when we're playing single notes, let me show you this first one here. I'll show you this and then we'll go into the single notes. So there's a song by Four Non Blondes called What's Up? And uh, I'm playing A, B minor, and D. 
Now, what happens in the song is you're going to hear that they're using this idea that I'm showing you here, and sometimes they're even strumming more than just one strum. So if I was going, It becomes part of the song to move and lift those fingers up as you, as you start moving around. It's really, really cool. So that's something to think about a little bit when you're doing this. You see, now when I play the song, I'm not really trying to just do two or three. I'm just trying to play kind of what I hear in my head as I'm playing this song. And I haven't listened to the song in a while, so I apologize if you go, well, it's, there should only be two or whatever. The point is, you can hear the changes in between. And it actually sounds like it's a different chord, doesn't it? Like that. So what's beautiful about this idea is that this hand never has to stop. It just does what you want it to do. You give it that rhythm, and now you can add those dynamics, some soft strumming or loud strumming or whatever it is you want to do to make it sound more dynamic. You see? And it never has to stop. You just lift this up when needed and you move it over. Is it live? Yeah, we're live right now. So. Yes, Mohammed, we are live. You see? Now let's look at some picking things. Here's a couple of songs, if I can remember them. Here's a couple of songs that use intentional strings that we are not pressing on. And what happens is, whether it's subconscious or, or uh, uh, you know, a, a consorted effort to do this, I don't know. But if I play this... You'll notice the last note that I play is this open G string, and what that enables me to do is take my hand off, again, like that robotic idea, and move to the next chord. And it ends with another open G. Okay, so I have. And then it ends again, this time with an open B, which gives us an A sus2 sound, okay, on the, uh, on the A there. So as I'm playing this, see, I start using that open string, just like our open strumming, as a way to shift See, so I have that, again, that last up strum is really what you're thinking about, or that last eighth note, if you think about it that way, to shift, to lift and shift to the next chord, which works really great. Here's another one. Which you might have heard that before. Right, right there. So what I'm doing there is using the open G string. See, over and over and over. So the same idea is happening there, where on that last eighth note, again, when, when they're writing these songs, I don't know whether they're thinking that or if it's just a natural thing to get from, you know, chord number one to chord number two, whatever it might be. But it works really great. So when you're playing, think about that a little bit. It's just if it's, if it's not very comfortable for you, you know, let's say you're just working on your chords and you're trying to get those developed, keep developing those. And I don't mean you have to develop 30 of them before you try and play a song. Learn to play three or four or five chords really well with bouncing and lifting and shifting, that memorization that you've, you've probably heard me talk about many times. Then start practicing scratching to songs, just listening to the song, figuring out what strumming pattern you're going to use, what works, right? And then as you start developing that, decide on, again, in a robotic sense, decide on a strumming pattern something that you can connect to and then start trying to move between two chords or three chords or whatever you want and as you get more comfortable then you can move back into the musical realm playing with more dynamics changing up your strumming pattern whatever it is that you'd like to do you can do that um, but if you try and do it all right away and your chords aren't developed or your strumming pattern isn't developed or the motion of 
you know, movement or putting the two together. Again, it seems like it should be so easy. You watch people play and go, wow, that looks easy. I can do that. And you can. But you got to break down the ideas a little bit first, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you, Douglas, Randy, Joseph, Tom, Parisian. Uh, Philip is here. X18 Busby 78X. Uh, Doug K is here. Dennis is here. Thank you, everybody, for being here. And uh, what we'll do is, is, again, meet next Monday as long as nothing comes up, and we'll keep going here. But this is something that you can use that works really great, even if you're doing bar chords or chord fragments or whatever it might be, is learning how to keep the strum going because this is where the groove is. This is where the rhythm is that people want to tap their feet or clap their hands or dance or whatever it might be. And you don't want to lose this when you start playing things. You want to keep that going. See that? So big voodoo. Ga <laughs> Gary is here. William is here. Um, awesome. So anyway, take care, everybody. Stay positive. Remember, if you're looking for any guitar lesson material, head over to guitarzoom.com, and you can check out my courses, the membership, all that sort of thing. Stay positive. Keep practicing, and I'll see you next Monday. All right, everybody? <laughs>